thank each and every one that are in the sanctuary. Amen. We want to thank our uh, Facebook fan. Amen. And then we also want to thank the ones that drove up to the service on the outside, Lord God. And Father, we just thank you for what you're doing today. You know, today I'm going to be talking about um, living and simplifying your life. You know, it, it's so many times I, I can remember that, you know, so many times we, we get busy in the doing things, but we don't take the time to sit down and replenish ourselves with the Word of God. Amen. And, and so this year we, we got to make sure that whatever we're doing, you know, a lot of times we get busy doing this for the Lord and doing that for the Lord and everything, you know, we take time to come around and make sure that the ministry is clean, but we got to t make sure that we take time and replenish ourselves with the Word of God. You know, you have to keep the Word first and foremost in your life. Don't get so busy that you don't take time to study. You know, we have to study to show ourselves approved and be right there where we can right there divide the Word of God. Amen. The Word of truth. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. You know, simplifying your life, you know, I don't be talking about, you know, Jesus was on a, on a journey and they came to this village and they, they stopped by this house. And, you know, how many times, you know, when you get unexpected guests, one in the house go around doing everything else and the other one just sit down and watch you work, amen, and then you get mad, amen. But um, we, we, we're just going to talk and touch on some things and encourage you, you know, on this year. You know, 2020, you know, it will... It was a, you know, a, a sort of tough year, but, you know, just what, we can throw up our hand and say we made it. Amen. Amen. We made it. Amen. Hallelujah. We made it. You know, we went through some trials and, and tough times, but we made it. Amen. And that lets you know that, you know, I, I never forget what was instructed when the pandemic first hit that we are to anoint the dope force of our house with oil. You know, and the ones that did it, you know, even though you may have some challenges or some situation came up, guess what? You was able to overcome it, amen. You was able to make it, amen. And, and so that's what we want to thank. In Luke, the 10th chapter, amen, I'll be reading this out, the message translation, Luke 10, 38. And it says, as they continued their travel, Jesus entered a village, and a woman by the name of Martha welcomed him and made him feel quite at home. She had a sister, Mary, who sat before the master, hanging on every word he said. But Martha was pulled away by all she had to do in the kitchen. Later, she stepped in, interrupting them, and said, Master, don't you care that my sister has abandoned the, the kitchen to me? Tell her to lend me a, a hand. The master said, Martha, dear Martha, you are fussing far too much. Amen. And getting and getting yourself worked up over nothing. One thing only is essential, and Mary has chosen it. It's the main course and won't be taken away from her. See, that's what I'm telling you. It don't matter what you're doing this year, you got to always take time to study the Word. You have to always take time and apply the Word of God to your life. Whatever situation or uh, circumstance that come up, don't allow you know, what you're doing to become more important than taking time to, to study the Word. You know, when you study this Word, you're filling yourself up because, you know, we're living in a time now where people need what you have, amen? They need to be able to, you know, you getting the Word, amen? You're being taught about faith. And, and see, during this time and season, you got to stand on faith more than any. You know, this is the time you got to stand on faith, you know, because Every time you, you turn on the news, you know, it always tells you about how this pandemic is getting worse and worse. But see, you got to start declaring some things. You know, what we have to realize that God has placed us in charge of the land. Amen. So we have to start speaking healing over our land. You know, the Bible talks about it, said, by his stripes where we heal. And, and so we, we got to speak to healing over our land. Amen. We got to curse this pandemic. You know, it, it's like the. They're trying to say they're finding more and more different strains, but, you know, but the devil is a liar. Amen. Amen. We're going to return back to normalcy. Amen. We're going to be able to do whatever we need to do, whatever we desire to do. Amen. We're going to be able to, you know, just run around and enjoy life. Amen. But as you enjoy life, like I said, don't, don't be like Martha. Don't get so busy that you don't want to take time to sit down and study the Word. 
you know, um, I was talking this morning, I was telling them that, you know, a lot of times people, we try to come up with excuses for why we can't study or why we can't do that. You know, it, you know, technology is amazing. You know, uh, I was sitting down and I was looking at, um, at, at some stuff on, on YouTube and when I sit close to the TV, every five minutes they got a commercial. So I moved back and I noticed I didn't, they didn't have one commercial. So, you know, technology is really, they, they watching you in your own home, maybe, and I didn't, and, and I, I was a, I was puzzled by it at first. I said, oh, they used to have commercials in here. And then my wife came around there and walked by the TV, and guess what, a commercial pop up. <laughs> you know, so, so you, you have to be mindful now in your own home that, that your own TV is watching you. It, it got senses in there watching you and everything. Amen, in Philippians 4, verse four through seven out the New Living Translation, it said, always be full of joy in the Lord. I say it again, rejoice. You know, this is a time this season we got to start, hey, throw yourself a party. Everybody that's having a birthday in January, you know, you don't don't you be sitting back to my, well, ain't nobody coming to my birthday because of the pandemic. Celebrate yourself, you know, have your own party, amen. Get up in the morning and say, this is my day because this is the day that the Lord has made. And tell yourself that I'm going to rejoice. You know, don't, don't be sitting there waiting on somebody to call you on the phone or send you a card. Say, I'm going to rejoice and I'm going to be glad in this day, amen. And it says, let everyone see that you are considerate in all you do. Remember, the Lord is coming soon, but don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Amen. You know, pray. It, it's a pray about everything. It, it, amen. Tell God what you need and thank him for, for all he has done. You know, we have to learn how to start thanking God in advance. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes, you know, like, even like you, you receive a word of prophecy, and some of us got some words of prophecy in 2020, and with the pandemic, we forgot about our prophecy. We didn't pray over it. We didn't look for it, amen. The only thing we were looking for is, is the, um, what that COVID-19. And, and quit looking for it, amen. amen. Start, get back to believing what God is saying he's going to do in your life. Where God is taking you, amen. God got vision and dreams for each and every one of us. And we, we got to, to get back to dreaming again. Amen. amen. When, you, when you go to bed, you know, get sweet sleeps. Dream and, and tell God, I just thank you. I just want to thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. I just I want to thank you, God, for where you are taking me. Amen. Some of us got so many dreams and visions that we have placed on hold, and we don't want to thank God. Amen. They said, then you experience God's peace, which is see anything we can understand. His peace will guard your heart and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. Amen. So we got to get back to it. Amen. Get back to being excited about the things of God. Get back to being excited about what God said he's going to do in your life. The, the promises and the dream. You know, uh, a lot of people was talking about, you know, as 2020 went out, I know it was some expectations, some things that we were believing God for that hadn't manifested yet. But, but think about it. You still got a chance. Amen. You still here. Amen. You still able to give God glory and praise for what he said he's going to do in your life and through your life. You know, there, there are people that, that are watching you. Want to see how you have, are you panicking? Or are you just going to be, you know, have live a simple life, live a peaceful life. You know, always give God glory. Always give him thanks and, and tell him, you know, tell God what you want. Amen. Tell him what you want. You know, that, that's what he wants to do. Tell him what, what we want. You know, in songs that tell us, they say, you know, God said he'll give you the desires of your heart. What do you desire? What do you believe in him for? What do you want to see happen this year? You know, this is the time right now is to set some things in motion. Start telling God what you want to see Amen. happen. Amen. Amen. You start dictating. You start prophesying. You know, you, you have the, the same ability to speak the same word over you. Amen. And when you speak it, believe that you receive it. Amen. Amen. Give God glory. You know, you have to declare you know, if you don't declare it by me prophesying or speaking things over you, it, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to come to pass because you've got to receive it. Amen. You know, I, I remember when I woke up on New Year's morning and it, it was like God just tell him, 
kept telling me that he's going to restore. You know, whatever the enemy has placed on, on hold in 2020, God is restoring that. Whatever they, they took from you, you know, you got to believe you're going to receive double for it. Amen. You know, the enemy has been caught. And when he gets caught, he pulls big double. Amen. Like some of us have lost some of our joy because of the situation. Amen. We may have had loved ones attacked. Uh, we lost loved ones in 2020. But, but see, we, we got to give it over to God. Amen. And, and as we give it over to God, guess what? God is going to increase your faith. Amen. You're going to be able to have a year like never before. Amen. You're going to be able to run with joy, run with peace. Amen. Hallelujah. And give God thanks. And it says, peace will guard your heart and mind as you live in Christ Jesus. First Thessalonians 4th chapter, verse uh, 11, at the end of the New Living Translation, it said, make your goal to live a quiet life. Amen. Minding your, this is the key, minding your own business and working with your hands, just as we have instructed you before. Amen. So that's the key right there. It said, mind your own business. Amen. See, if you go around and you, if you take time to mind your own business, then you ain't got to worry about what Sister Sue doing next door or Brother John doing down the street, you know, because you're doing what God has commanded you to do. Amen. And, and then it said, working with your hands. And, and see, I can't say that enough because God said he's going to bless the work of your hands. You know, we can't get like the slugger. You know, some people, they get so lazy. You know, it, it talks about, say, the slugger was so lazy. He was too too lazy to even put the, um, the spoon in a bowl and feed himself. You know, we don't want to get like that. Amen. You want to you wanna be mindful. You want to be excited. Amen. You want to be, you know, know that God is going to do great things for you. Amen. And great things that he has promised you and, and everything. Amen. You know, uh, so many times people say, well, I done got old now. No, you ain't old. You still here. You, you just in the prime of your life. Amen. You know, I, I never forget. I was I was meditating. I was thinking what, about 40 years ago when the local library was something like 50 or 60 cents. Amen. And, you know, people look at you and say, well, you used to work for that. But cost of living was cheap back then. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, some of y'all, y'all keep living like the, the little young ones, you know, <laughs> You know, I, I was talking, I remember when I was little, you know, small, we didn't have all this technology stuff. I still woke up one night and I saw so many lights on in, in one room. Everything in there was plugged in the socket. I mean, everything. I think it was about five little lights on. I was scared to go around this step around there. Because, you know, you don't see all them lights with the light on, but you wake up and, you know, everything plugged in got a light on. And so, and so technology has changed. You know, technology has really changed. Amen. You know, when they, everything called call for power, power go off, the new generation in trouble. Amen. They're in serious trouble. You know, they can't operate without power. Amen. Hey, we used to operate with, with no power. Amen. When, when the sun come up, you get up and enjoy your day. When the sun go down, you go to bed. When the rooster crow, Hey, you go to bed, amen. Nowadays, you know, these kids, 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning, they're still on their games, amen. And enjoying themselves, go to bed um, what, about 3 o'clock and then 6 o'clock, 7 o'clock, and you try to get them up and they're tired like they done been working on a job, amen. And so, so parents, we, we got a job to do. You know, when I was little, we used to take the bicycle, like we get a bicycle for Christmas, and most time, my brother be done tear his up by New Year's Eve. So we just take his tires and we'll roll it up and down the street. Amen. The, the, the bicycle, he doesn't tear that up. Amen. And then we have to start going to the junkyard. And well, y'all understand junkyards, you know. Like they got junkyard for cars, they had them for bicycles back then, too. Amen. We'll go there, we'll, we'll get a handle ball off this and that. It'll maybe get the frame off the other one. And, you know, his bicycle might be a little bitch back, but guess what? He, he had it. Amen. We put him back together. Amen. Or either we take cans and, you know, like the cans, we just kick the can and roll it down the street. Y'all look at him. You know, but that, that was life, and life was real simple back then. Real simple. You know, like some of these games we, we buy for our children now, and children got iPhones and ain't got a job. <laughs> you know, you see what, see what we're doing, amen? 
Hey, hey, you got a job, you got an iPhone. Some of them got a, what is it, iPhone 12 now? iPhone 12, man, and ain't no other job is, amen. I said, thank God, amen. So, you know, hey, we, got to, we got to get back to it. <laughs> First Thessalonians 4, 11 and 12, uh, the message say, stay calm. It's, a, it's, it's Here you go again, stay calm. Mind your own business and do your own job. You've heard all this for us before, but a reminder never hurts. You know, sometimes we have to remind people that life is, life is not hard. Amen. God has, once you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, life becomes easy. Amen. Now, I mean, it's so easy because, see, we already got somebody as a role model. Amen. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, you know, all we got to do is follow, the, the word says, follow Christ. Follow me as I follow Christ. And, and that'll make life easy for us. Amen. That'll make us be able to easily do some things and do what God has commanded us to do. Because, you know, in this day and time, like I was telling you, we we got to get back into into being serving God, make God first. You know, it sang that song this morning about be glorified. You know, ask God to be glorified in your life. You know, ask him every morning what we need to do is ask him to send somebody across your paths that need a word from the Lord. Amen. Because everybody is not privileged to, to what you are privileged to receive, amen. Everybody don't get told on how to live by faith, amen. How to be strong in the Lord, amen. How, see, you have to walk this thing out by faith and not by sight because a lot of things that we are seeing, you'll get disturbed, amen. Because, you know, it's hard to, 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 to fathom, fathom it in your mind some of the things that your eyes see, amen. So that's why we have to walk it out by spirit, by the spirit, amen, and, and give God glory and thanks for what he's going to do in our life, amen. In James, uh, the third chapter, verse 13 through 16, the message translation also, it said, do you want to be counted wise to build a reputation for wisdom? Here's what you do. It said, live well, live wisely, live humbly. It's the way you live, not the way you talk. You know, you, you go around some people and, you know, it's just the way they talk will make you, you know, get in a shell because you, it seems like they, they talk like they got it all together. But, but see, don't try to put yourself on a high plateau. You know, you know I, I was saying that the same road that you use to go up, don't burn your bridges as you're going up because sometimes you might have to come back down that way. So you want to make sure that you keep things simple and you keep things well. It's to live home. It's the way you live, not the way you talk. That counts. It's a mean-spirited ambition isn't wisdom. It's a boasting that you are wise isn't wisdom. Twisting the truth to make yourself sound wise isn't wisdom. It's the furthest thing from wisdom. It's animal, cunning, devilish, conniving. It's a whenever you're trying to look better than others or get the better of others, Things always fall apart. Everyone end up at the other at others' throat. You notice that sometimes, you know, you trying to uh, build yourself up to look good, and the next person trying to build themselves up to look good. But it's always better, I find out, to just be humble. Amen. You know, let God exalt you. Amen. You know, I I'll never forget a, a testimony when I used to play um, sports. Um, you know, I would never brag on myself, even though I. I worked hard, you know, when I, when I was playing sports and, and everything, but I would never brag on myself. I would always just, you know, do what I could do and, you know, which was good. I can brag now because I can retire. I just got, I just got the memories of what I used to do back then, amen, you know, but during that particular time. So what I want to encourage you, whatever you're doing for the Lord, you know, be humble about what you're doing. Let God ex exalt you, you know, don't. Don't try to, if you get in a conversation with somebody, you don't try to out-talk them and try to act like you, you have more wisdom or more, you're more spiritual than they are. You know, just be humble and let God, amen. Let God fight your battle, amen. It's a, um, and that way you won't end up at each other's throat. You know, uh, been looking, you know, most days, nowadays people, they get in arguments over anything, you know. You can, uh, who did I, I know some people be saying the same thing, and, but they ain't listening at each other. You know, just using one word different, and they just steady arguing. 
You know, but see, we got to learn how to walk things out by faith. Amen. It's a simplifying your life is is about more than doing less. You know, you can't just try to do less and say I'm gonna make my life simple because see, you got to understand now that you you are in the, the army of the Lord, and God requires more of you, but He also requires us to take time to give Him His glory, give Him His due, give Him His time. It's a distraction cause people to clutter their life. You know, so many things, what are you being distracted about? You know, sometimes we, we, we're trying to do too many things at once. It's a being who God called you to be. What, what, what is the vision and the dream that God has given you? You know, a lot of times when we get saved, God has given you a, a vision and a dream and a purpose in life. And, and see, you have to run and, and you have to figure out what are your purpose? You know, what, are, what am I supposed to be doing for the Lord? You know, I heard um, Miles Monroe uh, was saying one year when he been, came to a church, when that thing stuck to me, every, stuck with me ever since then. He said a lot of times people want to be preachers, and God just called you to be a, a, the, the bus driver. And, uh, you know, so just think about all the people that are not, you know, you're getting them to, to, to a place, but they're not receiving what they need because you're out of place. You know, a lot of times you can get out of place and doing things for, for God. So make sure that what you're doing, you're, it, it's your purpose. You're excited about doing it. See, if you're not excited about what you're doing for the Lord, you need to back up and ask God to, you know, to speak to you. God will speak to you. You know, God will give you wisdom. You know, just like I was saying when I, when I woke up Thursday, I mean Friday morning, it was like all I could hear was God was saying he's restored. Amen. You know, and a lot of people got to realize, you know, one of the main things, it don't necessarily always have to be money. Amen. You know, a lot of times, for some reason, we always think when we store it, I, well, I did, I did lose some money. Yeah, we all lost some money. Amen. But what about your joy, your happiness? Amen. Amen. You know, happiness will take you a long place. Amen. You know, the money, the money, sometimes money is easy come, easy go. You know, uh, especially with type business I do, you know, sometimes you can wake up and go to work and, and look around and you got a flat tire on something, that could cost you $3,000 right there. You know, so you can't be so excited about money. You have to be excited about the things of God. And, and one thing I, I, I realized also, you know, is that, you know, God will give you peace in those situations. You know, like if you're cooking dinner and you bring up the dinner, you know, you ain't gonna go through the roof. You ain't gonna be blaming your husband or blaming your wife, you know, because, you know, the dinner got messed up though, you're gonna be at peace. And, you know, all these fast food places and what Mrs. Paul pies and all of them, Mrs. Smith, <laughs> just go to this grocery store and buy you another pie and enjoy yourself so you don't have to get up and on. You see, that's what the enemy does. You know, the enemy will get you excited. You'll be so excited and when, I, when I'm saying excited, it's not a good excitement, it, it's a bad excitement. You know, when you just lose peace, you lose your peace. Yeah. And so you got to stay in your peace. you got to stay in whatever you're doing, amen. Simplifying your life requires more than just, and I mean, organizing your closet, or, or cleaning out your desk, desk drawer. It, it requires a little more. You know, sometimes we, we have to, like, do a blood transfusion. I, Heard one man, uh, pastor say when when he got saved, say they had to give Jesus a blood transfusion because he was one of the biggest sinners there ever was, you know. And so when you are changing and doing some things in your life, you know, t take time and, and restore. You, you know, you have to take time for yourself. You know, sit down and and, and take time. You know, like I'm um, pastor Anthony, and sometime you know when I go home, I just want to sit down and relax and take time for myself. I don't want to, you know, and when we got an empty nest sitting, when you ain't got too many people in the house that can bother you, amen? amen. And then the phone don't ring, nobody don't ring, so you know, you just take time for you and God. Amen. You know, and ask God to speak to you. Ask him, what, Lord, what would you have me to do? Especially starting this year, and you know, we're gonna be doing a fast and everything. So there's some things that, that each and one of, every one of us, we need to fast. We need to ask God, you know, just clean me out, Lord. You know, get a blood transfusion on some different things. Amen. Hallelujah. It requires uncluttering your soul. There again, that's what I was saying. You have to ask God when you get, you know, this year and you start on your um, 
you fans, you know, ask God, well, what are some of the things that are hindering you? You know, some of us gossip, gossip too much. You know, you got issues. ears. You always want to hear, you know, something bad about somebody else. But, you know, what you have to do is start speaking life over every situation. You know, the scriptures say all of us have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So that means each and every one of us, we got some things, we got some things in our life, some area in our life that we need to, to work on personally. Not, you know, just align, you know, everybody else. And don't allow people to just talk about you either. I'm not saying that now, but uh, I'm saying that, you know, work on you during this phase. What is it that, that you need to work on? What is that you need God? You know, some of us need to uh, get a refusion. I mean, have our faith touched again. You know, we need to work on our faith because we went through this been a trying year for a lot of people. And you guess what? You each one of us then been around somebody that was speaking negative. Amen. Amen. They, they had something negative. And every time you hear something, guess what? You got to judge it. So that's what I'm saying. You know, go back if it's still. You know, whenever you see that person, you think about the negativity or something. You know, you, sometimes you have to get away from some people. You know, I always tell you that what God is doing in your life, everybody can't receive it. Amen. You know, to to a lot of us, we still the same old person. You know, if you used to be on, on the corner and, and stuff like that, guess what? That's all they're going to see you as a person that hang on the corner. They're never going to see you. They knew you. You know, the ones that God has changed and what God is lifting up. Amen. The Bible talks about in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All those old things, all those bad things, you know, leave it on right back there in the old year. And, and move forward in the things of what God is doing you. Amen. Hallelujah. It says it requires uncluttering your soul, remove spiritual clutter, which causes confusion. Amen. When you establish order, it will eliminate clutter and confusion, but not conflict. Yeah, you still gonna have some conflict. You still gonna have some people that you know want to. You know, it's hard if. If you haven't been for 15, 20 years always hanging around people that gossip all the time and talk about somebody, you know, it, it takes a little while. But, but sometimes, you know, while you're fasting, that one of the best things to do is, is just fast that person. You know, just get away. Tell them, I can't talk to you for about three weeks. And, and then when the time to come back to them, you know, start telling them, you know, I don't need to hear that because you don't need to dump out some stuff and then dump out garbage to put more garbage in there. You want to put good stuff in. You want to have your life that, you know, if you start the year all right, you're going to have a good life. Amen. Amen. Hey, hallelujah. It's if you desire, if your desire is sincere, simple, simplifying your life, then you must take control of your time. How much of us manage our time? You know, if you're supposed to be, you got an appointment and it's say 10 o'clock and you get there at 10.05 every time. Guess what? That's, that's not... Managing your time, that means you're being late, you know. If you have a bill that's due on the first and you paid on the third, even though they give you them extra days sometimes, but they, they keep a record on this. Is, we want to we do things decent and in order this year. We want God to be proud of us. We want everybody to be excited about what we are doing and where we are going. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. It's a... By planning your day, you un eliminate unnecessary time leak, thus simplifying your life. You know, that's all you got to do. I never forget, um, that was back in the early 2000s, we've been to, uh, to a meeting, and uh, the pastor said one of the easiest ways to simplify clutter is to start writing some things down. Hey, Amen. What, what are your plans for the next day? Hey, Amen. What do you want to see happen? in your life. You know, we have to start speaking for some things. They say you have the ability to call those things that be not as though they were. Amen. So what are what are you calling into existence? What are you speaking you want to see happen this year? Amen. Where you want to go? Amen. You know, just think about it. God has not restricted us from doing the things that we would like to do. But we have placed the restriction on ourselves. But there again we still have to be careful. You know, they'll just don't run and do something, you know, but be careful about what you're doing and where, where you're going. Amen. It's a overcoming 
procrastination. Number one, we must have a measurement. You know, you, you got to start measuring yourself. What, what is it that, that you can do? Don't try to do something just because the next person is doing it. Do what you are able to do. Amen. It's so much frustration come in that we're trying to do what somebody else is doing. And we're not doing what God has ordained us to do. You know, everybody, you know, like the things that I do, everybody can't do that. You know, everybody can't be a pastor. But everybody was called to preach. You know, we we're supposed to be preaching the word. To, you know, when you run into somebody, you know, ask God to give you a word. Don't get in there, there arguing with them about different uh, teaching and stuff, but just talk about the word. The word is made simple. Amen. The word of God is so simple. Amen. Mm -hmm. And then set some goals on things that are obtainable. Amen. You know, a lot of times, most people, what they want, the first thing they want, they won't be a millionaire. <laughs> You know, most people want to be a millionaire, but what are, what are your plans when you become a millionaire? Amen. Is God going to see you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amen. You know, it, 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 so I, I used to always watch, you know, like people used to come and, Pastor, we need y'all to pray that I get a job. And when they get the job, <laughs> the first thing that, that people do is put them to working on Sundays and Tuesdays. You see what the devil does? It, that takes them, and the next thing you know, well, I got the work. I got Yeah, you got the work, but they need to start letting some of them folks will be in the club all night. Let them come to work on St. Amen. 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 You, you need to have time, spend time with God. The Bible said we, we are not to forsake to assemble ourselves together. Amen. It, 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 it's such a cohesiveness when believers come together in unity. Amen. Amen. You know, we're able to pray one for another. You know, a lot of times you... Well, when you get hooked in with a group, you know, you don't have to, you can sense in the spirit when your brother is, is needing prayer. Amen. You know, and, and a lot of times we don't have to let, allow what they're dealing with be dumped into our spirit. Just pray and ask God to give them grace. Amen. Ask God to give them peace that they're able to handle what they're believing, what they're dealing with. Amen. Amen. But a lot of times we want to know everything. We want to know what, what they're dealing with, who, who said what, how, what happened. And, and everything. And, and, you know, so make your goal attainable. Set, set some standards that you are able to obtain. And, you know, the easiest way to obtain things when, when you believe in God, a lot of times one of the most simplest things is, I, I use this, will help me get started. You know, most times when people have headaches, the first thing they want to do is grab an Anderson or a bear. You know, sometimes we have to just say, Father, heal me of this headache. You know, just, just ask God to just hear you. It's simple, like a headache and, and stuff like that. That's obtainable. <clears throat> There'll be a realization, have a realization, you know, what you believe in God for, that you can handle it and you can receive it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Because he said he'll give you everything that your heart's desire. But a, a lot of times, are we able to handle it? You know, God know. you know, some things that he know that if we get it, he ain't going to see you no more. Let's go to church. Amen. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. There again, most people, they want more money. They want to be a millionaire. You know, more money don't necessarily give you peace. Amen. A lot of people think, well, if I had more money, I know. You had more money, you got more, more challenges, more struggles. Amen. Amen. And, and, and more everything. Because, see, the first thing, the more money you get, the more you want to spend. Amen. You know, you don't want to. We was talking about in, in uh a book of Acts when everybody had everything in, in common this morning. You know, you, you want to be able to um, they, they, they sow a seed to help your brother. And if you see a brother or sister in need, you know, if you get more money, one thing, your number one goal is you want to be able to reach out and help somebody else. Amen. You know, it's not you looking down on nobody, but you want to be, be a blessing to somebody else. Amen. And then number four, this, the last one. It say we, we have to start putting a time limit on what we're believing for. You know, putting a time limit in. And if you pray and praying in honest and, and taking time, it, it's good to, to work in the house of the Lord, but you got to also spend time with the Word of God. You know, uh, it, it used to be people, I remember when I first got saved, I used to see God, they'll take off from work and come and, and do manual labor in the church. And then we, they was having a conference. They wouldn't, they wouldn't take the time to come to the conference. 
And the next thing you know, you know, the enemy tell them, well, I'm doing all the work right here. Yeah, see, that's how the devil plays tricks on your mind. And, and then the next thing you say, you're in agreement with the devil. Yeah, I show sure them. I'm doing, I'm doing all this. And the next thing you know, you're done ease off. And then what you say, don't keep over there ain't right. You know, they, and everything. But see, we got to take time this year. We got to, you know, take time to simplify what you believe. What do you believe in God for? You know, a lot of times, you know, we have to go back and we're going to eliminate clutter. You know, technology is good. You know, I ain't that good with all this technology stuff. I'm still the simple fellow. My mom and dad are still, I went by my mama's house yesterday. We still got the, you know, a lot of y'all ain't know what it is. The children probably look at that rotary phone where you stick your finger in there and, and, and turn it. They still got it, and guess what? It still works. So, so you know, we can't eliminate all all the old. You know, you have to take some of the, the old with you. And, and, you know, and as you're putting a time limit on, you know, you're praying, find somebody that need to be prayed for. Somebody that need a word from the Lord. There, there are some people that are really struggling. You know, they're going through this pandemic. They lost their job. Someone had lost loved ones and everything. And you, you still got to let them know that God said that he would never leave them and he would never forsake them. Amen. And then, you know, ask God to give you a scripture to give to them. You know, a scripture. When you, you find a word that you're able to stand on, you know, God honors his word. Amen. And as God is honoring his word, guess what? And things are going to change. You know, a lot of times we believe in God for different things. And uh, and as we believe in God for different things, just, just, just think about it that uh, in Luke, it, it talks about the, the, the ten lepers. You know, they came to Jesus and asked Jesus to heal them. And Jesus healed them. And, you know, the scripture says they went. You know, they were healed. But guess what? Out of ten, able one came back to give him thanks. And so when God is doing things in your life, always go back and give him thanks. Amen. That one what came back. See, when you got leprosy, you know, you got different things, limbs and stuff that falls off. But that one was restored fully. Everything that the enemy has stolen from him, he got it back. And so this year, that's what I want to tell you. Everything that the enemy tried and tried to steal from you last year, you already got it back. Amen. You have to call it. Call it in. Call those things that be not as though they were. Thank God for what he's doing. Amen. Father, we just thank you and praise you, Lord God, for this day, Father. Father, we thank you right now for your word, Lord God. Father, we're thanking you right now that this word has fallen on good ground. We're thanking you that each and every one that heard the word, Lord God. Father, that if they are going through any type of struggle, that they're going to take time, Lord God, to give you more of their time. They're going to take time to listen to your word, Lord God. Father, they're going to take time to learn how to rejoice in the things of you, Lord God. And Father, we just thank you that if they allow you, Lord God, to be glorified in their life, Lord God, that their life is going to change on this day forward as we give you all the honor and glory. Uh, we don't want to close without giving you an opportunity to make Jesus as your Lord of your life. If, if you know, if you hasn't, haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, guess what? This is your day. This is your time. This is your season. Amen. It, it, it's so simple. You know, it, it's not any work that you can do. You know, you just have to make a confession. You have to just ask uh, Jesus to become Lord of your life. And it, it's so simple. I just want you to repeat after me. Say, Almighty God. Almighty God. I just ask you today. To become Lord over my life. Be chief in my life. As I give you all the honor and glory. For being Lord over my life. In Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You know.